Let me read to you a passage from the 14th chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 15 to 24. It's the Gospel for Tuesday of the 31st week in Ordinary Time, year 2. It's a passage about the judgment of God. St. Luke writes, One of those at table with Jesus said to him, Blessed is the one who will dine in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied to him, A man gave a great dinner to which he invited many. When the time for the dinner came, he dispatched his servants to say to those invited, Come, everything is now ready. But, one by one, they all began to excuse themselves. The first said to him, I have purchased a field and must go to examine it. I ask you, consider me excused. And another said, I have purchased five yoke of oxen and am on my way to evaluate them. I ask you, consider me excused. And another said, I have just married a woman and therefore I cannot come. The servant went and reported all this to his master. Then the master of the house, in a rage, commanded his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town, and bring in here the poor and the crippled, the blind and the lame. The servant reported, Sir, your orders have been carried out, and still there is room. The master then ordered the servant, Go out into the, into the highways and hedgerows, and make people come in, that my home may be filled. For I tell you, none of those men who were invited will taste my dinner. That's from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 15 to 24. And what does it suggest to us? Well, you know, <clears throat> one of the truly catastrophic phenomena of modern history was the ascendancy of Marxism. It is amazing how Marxism caught the imagination of vast numbers of persons, including intellectuals and leaders, for close to a century, and was passed on by them to populaces. It purported to be the answer to the oppression of the masses and quite important in its, in its system was the notion that God and his care was delusory. It was a delusion. Marx and Engels interpreted religion as an opiate. An opiate that gave unfounded consolation to the ignorant masses labouring under unceasing burdens. It distracted the peoples from managing the world and society in a way that would bring blessings in life. My point here is that one of the results of this was that the thought of a divine judgment was suppressed from the religious imagination of great numbers in the modern age. By contrast, the image of the divine judgment had been a distinctive legacy of the Christian religion, and in particular of Catholicism. The religions of man have not necessarily included the thought of a divine judgment on the individual in the afterlife. Many indigenous religions do not include it, at least not explicitly, there is no such thought in the traditional religion of the Australian Aborigines, at least typically speaking. While forms of it seem to have been present in Egyptian religion, as far as I am aware, it was only dimly operative in Greek and Roman religion. Even the, re even the re revealed religion of the Old Testament had hazy notions of a future judgment on the individual. It was certainly part of the ancient re revelation, but clarity came 
with Jesus Christ. The doctrine of the divine judgment on each individual and on the whole human race that the world is so familiar with, a judgment with profound consequences comes, we could say, from Christ. This thought of the judgment has in the past profoundly affected the culture of the West and through the West much of the world. This revelation from Christ of a judgment transmitted and expressed in the doctrine of the Catholic Church is a hallmark of revealed religion. Part of the recovery of a vital religion in one's life will be the recovery of a conviction of the future judgment of God. Any familiarity with the Gospels makes it abundantly clear that Christ often spoke about the judgment of God and how awesome it will be. Great happiness will follow it and great misery, depending on how worthy a person is judged to be. Our Lord spoke of those judged worthy of a place in the kingdom of heaven. And in our gospel today that I read earlier, he responds to the person who extolled the good fortune of those who would feast in the kingdom of God. Our Lord said, a man great, gave a great dinner, to which he invited many. When the time for the dinner came, he dispatched his servant to say to those invited, Come, everything is now ready. But one by one, they all began to excuse themselves. God intends us to dine with him in his kingdom to come. But very many turned down the invitation. Presumably, at this stage of his parable, he is referring to the children of Israel. Then in the parable, the Master sends out everywhere to invite everyone. The story concludes with the solemn warning, I tell you, none of those men who were invited will taste my dinner. He was referring, of course, to those who had been invited and who had refused the invitation. But if our Lord chose to speak so often of the judgment of God and of the reward or punishment facing every person who has been granted the gift of life, it is incumbent on each one of us to think of this judgment. In the literature of the world there are many accounts of great religious conversions. A good proportion of them have resulted from the thought of the future judgment of God. At the end of life comes death, and what will happen then? That is a powerful thought that can change lives. And it's not just a useful thought. It is a most certain and bedrock fact that cannot be shifted or avoided in the long run. If it is never taken account of, then life will have been tragic, and the tragedy will be eternal. God sent his divine Son to save the world from sin and its diresome consequences. The wage of sin, St. Paul tells us, is death. The death that comes from unrepented serious sin is eternal. The reward for a life of love and obedience to God is also eternal. It all hinges on the judgment of God. And it is this judgment that our Lord speaks of in today's parable. So, let us so live as to be found worthy of a place with God when we pass from here to our judgment hereafter. 